now we're gonna go with Hylas then. I, I think she she won't be here. So Tom, if you want to to start her her talk. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me. Writing code is something that we learned, right? But but managing a project end to end, probably not that much. In this talk, I will share my journey of migrating an entire R&D code base from Bitbucket Cloud to a self-hosted GitLab on my own, but with the help of great people along the way, of course, planning, implementation, and handoffs. I will share best practices for managing a technical project end-to-end -end, with a lot of key takeaways that you could adopt so your project will be handled smoothly and successfully. So first of all, hi, my name is Hila Fish. I'm a senior DevOps engineer and I work for Wix. I have 15 years of experience in the tech industry. I recently joined AWS Community Builders. I'm co-organizer of conferences in Israel where I live, DevOps Days Tel Aviv and Statscraft. I'm a mentor in courses and communities, DevOps culture fan. I think this is what helps companies achieve great things. And I'm a lead singer in a cover band, as you can see in this picture, which is a lot of fun. Okay, so this project took all in all, from start to finish, one month and a half. Is it a lot? Yeah, no, you tell me after seeing this presentation. So the project structure is looked something like that. Starting with planning, so what to think about, things to consider, foresee bottlenecks and tackle them up front, deadlines, etc. Then the implementation phase, uh, needed considerations like uh, integrations, we had Jenkins, we had Jira, so all, all of these uh, thoughts. Uh, security aspects, handling expected blockers and leave room for the unexpected, of course. So everything for the implementation was in this uh, phase. Training for the R&D department, they didn't know anything about uh, GitLab, so I had to uh, allow them uh, a way to be familiar with this tool. Documentation and handoffs. Um, so usually I leave documentation behind because I want people to know what, what I did. But fun fact, uh, the company that I did this project for, I left this company shortly after finishing this project. So it was even, it was really important for me to leave documentation behind because I wanted them to know uh, how to maintain uh, GitLab while I'm gone. And hovering above everything is project ongoing uh, statuses because, hey, they want to know what's going on, especially because I did everything on my own. They need statuses, my managers. So always, always I gave them uh, statuses that they can be at ease of what's going on. So before the, pl the planning itself of the project, there was actually a pre-planning phase. So when I got started, I first started asking questions like to, to understand the, the scope of the project, right? So first of all, what is my deadline? And also, uh, why are we doing this migration? Because that way I can make sure the project process and the outcome is according to the management needs and requirements, right? Also, do I have any limitations? Like, do we need to do uh, or want to do things in a certain way? For example, GitLab has two uh, deployments, Omnibus, which is the VM installation, and Helm release for Kubernetes deployment. We uh, at, at that company used a lot or used heavily uh, Kubernetes, so we um, naturally uh, selected this deployment, but there could be a lot of uh, limitations or a lot of things to consider that will affect the planning, so we need to think about that before we start to actually plan uh, the project ahead. And starting, uh, speaking of planning ahead, a goal without a plan is just a wish, right? So we need to have a plan. And once I felt like I have enough information to go on, then I created a high level plan. So this was the plan. Okay, cool. But it is great for me, the executor of the plan. But management wants milestones and due dates. This is how they can measure progress and convey the status in a clear manner. So that's why I've taken my plan and converted it to be actionable and measurable with setting up milestones and due dates. So let's see. The first milestone was the telephone code. Uh, in this phase, I created the, the telephone code for the GCP projects because we worked on GCP, Google Cloud Platform, Dev and Production. Also, telephone code handled the GKE, the Google Cloud Platform a Kubernetes offering. It, it handled that and the GitLab deployment, the Helm release. I'm going to speak about it a little bit uh, later. So everything in, in regards to the telephone and the infrastructure prerequisites and the actual GitLab uh, deployment was done in this phase. Then networking and uh, troubleshooting. So since networking was handled by a different team, I automatically added a dedicated slot for troubleshooting since it involved not only me, right? And 
it doesn't mean that networking, uh, network troubleshooting was restricted only to this phase. I had to troubleshoot issues throughout the project, but I tried to map every source destination that I could uh, and have it all checked out in this phase. The next uh, milestone was GitLab up and running, including DNS name, uh, certificates, and some integration, everything that says GitLab is ready to go. Next milestone was a first bear repo migration. So I had to, to use the GitLab migration feature in order to import the repository from Bitbucket to uh, GitLab. I had a lot of issues. I created a lot, a lot of tickets. Some tickets, uh, the support uh, people said, hey, we already have an issue uh, opened and some they fixed, but it took them some time. So it was a, a lot of ping pong until the actual uh, repository was able to get created properly and work with it. So everything about that was in this uh, phase. Next milestone was a peripheral infra uh, backups and monitoring. So usually, or not usually, I don't know how you do things on your end, but uh, backups and monitoring are stuff that you leave to the end because it's not that important as the deployment itself, right? Because we want to keep moving, we want to do things quickly and to achieve a platform that is working and have the backups and monitoring after that, right? But think about it. This is source control management that we talk about. This is the code of the company. So because it was uh, super uh, crucial uh, and we are the ones to manage the, the code now, uh, this uh, part of, of the implementation was had to be done uh, in an earlier stage. So backups and monitoring were introduced and I checked them over uh, in this phase. So backups and restore, uh, both on full system of the GitLab and repo level and branch level. And not everything was documented well on a GitLab side. So I documented it on the documentation that I that I left after I gone. I was gone. Uh, monitoring, so system uh, monitoring and also application monitoring, the GitLab metrics. I'm also going to uh, drop something about that uh, on the implementation phase afterwards. And also in this phase, I tried to concentrate also the, the, uh, the second and last part of networking troubleshooting. So SSH and HTTPS from several sources were checked and fixed in this uh, phase as well. Next milestone was the second repo uh, migration with the pipeline because at that time we used or we migrated to GitLab only as an, an SCM, source control management, and not as a CI. So we had Jenkins and we need to have Jenkins uh, communicate with GitLab and pull the repositories from it and push and stuff like that, right? So everything that in, is related to the disintegration was done in this phase. Uh, Jenkins integration itself, the configurations on Jenkins and GitLab side to make it work, and actually everything that is needed to uh, test fully Jenkins against uh, GitLab repo was done in this phase. The next milestone was a training gradual login and continuous uh, migration. So training uh, for my team that needs to maintain it, but also for the R&D that needs to use it. So I gave them initial intro on the main features. I'm going to show uh, more about it later. Um, gradual login. So how uh, GitLab works. Once you set up some integration, uh, you can log in with your uh, with your summer integration. But uh, uh, GitLab needs to create an enti entity first on GitLab side in order for for us the the admins to link between the entity and the permissions. So I knew that I have to tell the R and D, hey, please start to log in so I can. Uh, and start and set up the permissions because I don't want to do it in the last minute, right? So on the training uh, session, I show them what they need to do in, in, along with the actual uh, platform. And I uh, encourage them to log in to dev and then to production. So the user will get created and then I can set up the permissions. So uh, this was done uh, as well. And since I already migrated to uh, repositories, I know I got the hang of it and I can continue with the migration of the all repositories that we had. So I divided all repositories to teams. So it was coordinated with each team when the repositories will get migrated. And last but not least, the last milestone was migration done, documentation and handoffs. So I migrated all repositories until that point, except for the backend repo, which was big and important. and you know, the, the most crucial one. So I had a, 
uh, educated decision to leave it to my weekend. And in Israel, weekend is Friday and Saturday. And let me tell you, it was a happy Sunday after that. So I didn't want to uh, disrupt um, backend and have them wait because I saw that on dev, it took a lot of time to import the this, this uh, repository, several hours. So since I didn't want to make them uh, be on a strike or something like that, then I did it on my weekend uh, and there's, that's that. And then I finished preparing documentation and handoffs. I say finish because I prepared it throughout uh, this project because I knew that I wouldn't remember what I did at the beginning. So I added a bit uh, along the project and then in this phase I just finished and added some more stuff. So the commentation was for DevOps to maintain it and for the R&D, how to change uh, the local repo to work with uh, GitLab. So that was the plan. And um, I've created a planning doc uh, that consists of the milestones that I just showed you, uh, plus these extra sections. And I decided to put them all on that document to have one place that have all aspects uh, referenced. So first steps, a mapping of needed steps on my side and external teams so I can lay it all out and see what can be done in parallel and what should be done ASAP to reduce bottlenecks later on. To do uh, out of scope high level tasks, uh, things to do and remember after this project is finished, like stuff re that relates to the CI or anything else. Uh, read more things to dwell on and deepen our knowledge in because I had a lot of things to read and I knew that some are important right now and some don't or not, so I put them aside and things to think about, considerations for annual audits and stuff like that. And some more addendums uh, to the planning doc, because why not? Uh, report issues that I've encountered both on GitLab side on, and on our side, the Dela side. Uh, they were listed, of course, on Jira tickets and stuff like that. But again, it was a centralized place to see any issues that we have that could potentially uh, endanger the project's timelines. And more things, so access mapping, inbound and outbound accessibility to Bit buckets, so we can do it also for uh, GitLab, LDAP groups for the login, and uh, main repositories and CI pipeline to track the progress of the migration. Okay, so we talked about the planning, uh, right? So that's good, but we need to remember that I did this project on my own. And since I worked on this project alone, it was very crucial to update my managers on the status so they can report back to their managers and to show them that I'm progressing according to the needed timelines. So I had uh, weekly meetings to update my managers on the progress, plus ad hoc meetings with updates on blockers, like either issues that I need their attention uh, and help to escalate, or just an FYI, like this is how I'm handling it, uh, if you're okay with it, so it's just an FYI. And me and my managers created Jira tickets for everything that I did with, and I added detailed updates uh, and current status on each one. I created more tickets along the way, of course, so the, there's communication is key in this uh, in this um, particular um, scenario. And the thing that we need to remember is that information is power, and information when delivered properly without overbearing the recipients with details can help ease the decision making process, deliver a feeling of stability, and allow your ongoing independence uh, of running the project, which is, which is super super important, especially when you're working on a project alone and you don't want to have any more bottlenecks. Um, and also another thing that I want to uh, mention is that I had a meeting with the R&D team leaders uh, to prepare them for the migration and explain what is going to happen, plus involve them in the folder structure decision uh, because I wanted their input as the code owner. But not only that, I wanted to um, make them feel that they are a part of it. And that way I knew that I will have their cooperation later on. So this was basically the, the most uh, important reason why I actually did this meeting. Okay, so let's talk about the implementation. So as I said before, Terraform code uh, that created um, the projects in, on GCP, dev and production, and GitLab has Helm release. So since we use Terraform, I had to do a little bit of tweaking to incorporate the Helm release in the Terraform uh, code that we have that we had. Um, and another thing that, that is very important to mention is that GitLab was very and totally new to me. Okay, so I really had to rely a lot on the documentation since my tight schedule didn't really allow enough time to play with the system and do some trial and errors. 
And reading the documentation is really, really important, but also considering trade-offs like, okay, this is a must read now, but this could wait until I have more time. And then I put this in the uh, section of the planning doc or uh, what else to read, right? So a lot of things that needs to be uh, um, I think I thought of was uh, on that planning doc. And also, uh, uh, Again, I can't stress enough reading the documentation, especially, especially when you have tight schedule, because only because I, I read the documentation, I decided to do a couple of things. So let's go uh, through them. First of all, I used DB version X and not Y, because the documentation stated that uh, if I use that version, it will prevent later maintenance because they uh, plan to use the next major version with that DB version. So if I didn't read it, then I will force my team members to do uh, a maintenance after that. So it was very important to, to do. Another thing is that I haven't implemented the a high availability feature because it wasn't GA'd yet. Um, another thing is was the monitoring. So monitoring was, uh, wasn't baked for their Kubernetes uh, offering yet. So I basically did it myself. I went through the metrics documentation. I added dashboards according to what I thought was important and alerts based on those metrics. Uh, backups. So they had backup for the DB itself, but they didn't have backup for the, the secrets that, that is used to restore that uh, DB. And they say so in the documentation. They say, uh, for the DB backup, you, you can use our cron job, but if you want to backup the secrets that you have to use in order to restore that, that DB, then you, you should do this uh, backup yourself. Why? I don't know, but I did it. So I created another cron job um, manually that uh, backed up this secret in order for the DB uh, backup to be viable, right? Because without that secret, I can't restore. So it was very, very important. And only because I read the documentation, I saw that. Um, another thing is that um, the while once I started this implementation, when I, when I deployed the Helm release, uh, I saw I had a lot of issues, like I tried to upgrade and then I had some issues and I couldn't find the reason online. And the thing is that secrets and the PVC are coupled and dependent. And when I tried to uh, upgrade uh, Helm, I uh, did an install and I removed the secrets as well, but I didn't remove the PVC because, hey, I want the data, right? And then there was a mismatch because again, secrets and PVC coupled. So also something that, that uh, needs to uh, to be bear in mind that when you uh, deploy the Helm release, don't do uninstall or the don't remove the, the secrets, uh, the Kubernetes secrets. Leave them because when you do uninstall uh, of the Helm release, they they stay. Okay, and I didn't know that back then, but it was for a reason. So um, there's there's uh, was the fun facts about the implementation themselves. And also a fun fact, uh, GitLab changed their official documentation due to an issue we raised during uh, implementation once it was almost production. Um, so I don't have much time to discuss it, but if you want, I can tell you about it later. Okay, so uh, training. Uh, so GitLab again was a new tool that the R&D department didn't know. And also the glossary was different. Pull request is not a there yet anymore it's merge request and i didn't want to spring it up on them and expect them to feel comfortable using it from day one so that's why i had a training session because i wanted them to be familiar with gitlab before they start to use it i also had an onboarding doc to to tell them how to change the local repo from bitbucket to gitlab and yeah you can find it online but i wanted them to feel that they have support and that's why i did it and have a quick adoption of course and a dedicated Slack channel for the R&D to raise questions and bugs and support all uh, GitLab related issues, because again, I want to give them a, a sense of support. The conversation and handoff, I already mentioned it a bit uh, before, but it was, I covered everything that I could uh, in order for uh, the DevOps team to maintain it, from how to deploy a new version of GitLab to how to manage it and replace certificates and even how and what information to provide to GitLab support when you're opening a, a ticket to prevent ping pong. So everything that I could, I shared in this uh, documentation um, uh, documentation that I left uh, behind. Okay, 
So I cover a lot of things here, right? Um, so let's see what can you take other than the bits of, and pieces in regards to GitLab itself. Uh, what can you take about uh, managing a technical, technical project? So planning is a must, right? And to understand the company's needs and why this project is important and use this information to try and foresee uh, any bottlenecks and plan how you're going to tackle them upfront. Also derive the deadlines based on all the information that you've gathered and then execute accordingly. Structure will help you achieve, achieve things in a timely manner and literally uh, progress according to plan. Updates and collaboration matters. Um, it doesn't matter if you're working on a project alone or with others, you should always involve and bring the stakeholders up to speed, managers, other team leaders that are affected by this, uh, by this project, etc., uh, including regular updates and raising flags on issues. Brainstorming and collaboration matters point two. So it's always best to showcase the technical implementation you're planning to your team members and manager to A, make them familiarize themselves with the project since they need to support it later on the platform and B, to see if they have remarks on things they, uh, that you haven't thought about to make sure that the implementation that, will, uh, that you will do will be as best and suitable for your use case as possible. Um, next mal uh, key takeaway is that trade-offs are a given, right? Um, deadlines and man uh, mandatory nice to have implementations are always also always uh, things that you need to uh, consider. So make sure you execute based on that. Because yeah, it's fun to play with the uh, with the cool features that the UI has. But if you if you are under a tight schedule, you should focus on what matters right now. Documentation is key. I couldn't stress it enough. Both the documentation that you read while implementing technical and logical aspects, and also uh, the documentation that you leave behind. So um, the documentation for the implementation uh, will help you take the right decisions and defend those decisions whenever needed. And the documentation that you leave behind, knowledge sharing is important. And last but not least, change is hard. And when people are used to working in a certain way, you need to take that into consideration. And when you plan the, the project, especially if it's a migration uh, project. So make sure you leave time for training and familiarization with the tool. So thank you so much. I really hope that you enjoyed it. I know that I spoke quickly at times because I didn't have much time. If you have any questions about GitLab, I will try to answer uh, as much as I recall, or about technical project or about any SRE topics, I will be more than happy to help. Thank you so much. Hello again. And Hyla, I think it's Hyla. Sorry if I pronounced wrong. Like, she's not here to ask, but uh, she's on the chat, actually, just not on the call. So if you have any any questions for her on, on her journey from Bitbucket to GitLab, feel free to ask and, and she can answer here. And thanks, Highlight. I think it was great. Uh, I like that you show the, the many angles from changing the, the tool. It's not just like the code. It's like you have to align people and, and all the processes you show. It's many, many steps, not just, oh, let's change tools. So it was a, a really nice journey. Thanks again for, for sharing. And again, she, she's in the chat. If anyone has any questions or want to talk to her, just just send on, on the public channel.